Hi, I'm Ryan Stallings, and today I'm going to be demonstrating the Air Systems International Saba cart. Saba stands for Supplied Air Breathing Apparatus. And so we'll be going over this cart, how to use it for personnel use and for tool use, um, all the aspects incorporated in it and all the other equipment that we can use um, in conjunction with it. So first of all, we're going to go over the cart. So it has uh, capacity to have two 60 minute SCBA bottles, one on each side. So you connect in with the threads on the SCBAs. Each side has its own independent um, bleeder valve. It's a one way valve. So when you bleed this side, it doesn't bleed the whole system. It just bleeds the hose in between the SCBA cylinder and uh, this valve. So both sides have the valve to bleed out the hoses, okay? So um, the, SC, the uh, Saba cart, it has a personnel side and it has a tool side. So the personnel side is yellow, tool side is blue. Personnel side has four connection points for four personnel. Tool side has four high pressure connection points and one low pressure connection point. So the inlet pressure for personnel is 5,000 PSI maximum. Here's the gauge for the inlet pressures. So 5,000 PSI maximum for personnel side, 5,500 PSI maximum for tool side. So pressure regulator knobs for personnel and for high pressure tools. So we also have an outlet pressure gauge. This is the outlet pressure gauge for personnel side. Maximum is 125 PSI maximum outlet. Normally we set it to around 80 PSI where we have that black, black hash mark. Tools, the high pressure tools, these four connection points, the maximum um, pressure output is 275 PSI. Okay, that's designated or they have a green hash mark showing 275 is our maximum outlet PSI and we normally set it to around 80 PSI for regular air pressure for high pressure tools. So now at the very bottom, still on the blue side, we have a low pressure connection and our low pressure maximum outlet pressure is going to be 125 PSI. We have a regulator to um, regulate what pressure we wanna set that tool at. So maximum is 125 PSI for low pressure tools. So up top, if you want to come in a little bit closer, we have a toggle switch that is the um, relief valve for either the um, personnel side or the tool side. So if we set this toggle switch to the left for personnel side, the relief valve is set to 125 PSI. If we flip that over to the right on the blue side, the pressure relief valve is set to 275 PSI for the tools. So if we're going to be only supplying pressure or air to personnel, set it on the yellow side. And if we're going to be doing both, then set it to the blue side for 275 PSI uh, relief valve for the tools. So we have a whistle on the personnel side and a bell on the tool side that signify uh, when our pressure is getting below 500 PSI. So when we're Getting below 500 PSI, the whistle will blow for personnel and the bell will ring for the tools side. Um, changing bottles out, we always open up one bottle at a time. That way when one bottle starts getting low, we can immediately turn on the other bottle. It'll fill the, the pressure back up in the system and then we can shut this bottle off, bleed the valve, take, disconnect it and put a new cylinder in and we never have to go without air pressure in the system. So um, we keep one bottle on at a time. When one bottle goes low, once uh, it goes below 500 PSI and the whistle blows or the bell rings, then we can sh turn on the other bottle and then shut off one bottle, bleed it, disconnect, install a new one, and then press on. And then keep going in that order. Um, so we can take we have multiple 60 minute cylinders on rescue and hazmat. And if we need to use more cylinders, we can take the um, quick disconnect nipple off of our 45 minute bottles. And so that these uh, connections will thread onto those bottles as well. 
So on the top, we also have a, um, a male connection for a hose that attaches to our air trailer. So over here, we have this blue hose. Both ends have the same connection, except one end has a, a little bleeder valve. So this hose will allow us to have continuous supply of air from our air trailer. So we take one end and thread it on to the top, all the way down, obviously. And the other end connects into our, our air trailer on the lower left side of the back panel. And then we can have continuous air where we don't have to be replacing bottles. So um, speaking of air sources, we have an air source switch. So when it's vertical, the air sources are isolated, meaning there's a valve in here that is shut off that allows you to have separate air sources supplying the personnel side and separate air source supplying the tool side. So air source isolated, if we turn on the bottles, it'll only supply the personnel side. If we turn on the common air source and then we turn on a bottle, it'll supply both sides. So one thing to be aware of is high pressure tools take a lot more air than um, personnel do. So it's important to have separate air sources. So one thing we can do, um, if we do have a connection to the air trailer, we can isolate the air sources. And now the air from the trailer is coming in and feeding only the high pressure tools. And then we can use the bottles to supply air to the personnel. Also, if we wanted to supply both sides with air from the trailer, we can just have it be a common air source, meaning any source coming in will go to both sides. So if we don't need to use tools, we can isolate and only fill the personnel side. If we do need to use tools and air for personnel, we put it in a common air source so that it supplies both sides. Okay, so we've talked about the relief valve, the connection for the trailer, the bell, the whistle, the um, air source isolations, the gauges for inlet pressure, regulators, outlet pressure gauges, connections. Um, and now another thing we need to talk about is our hoses. So for our um, rescue apparatus, we have six bags of 200 feet of air hoses and each bag has an umbilical with the communications line built in as well. So the connection side that goes to our, our rescuer is going to have a female end to the rescuer for the air hose and a male end to the rescuer for the comms line. Okay, and then that's gonna be coming out of the top of our bag and then coming out of the bottom of our bag is gonna be a male end for the air hose and a female end for the comms line. So a key task to complete when we're first setting up all of our equipment is to have someone who is maybe more of an operations level person taking our hose out and flaking it out in an available space so that it pays out when the rescuer is going in the confined space and through the tunnels. So that it pays out nice and it's not gonna get uh, tangled up or kinked. So to connect our hose to the cart, we have our male end and we stick it in and it should just pop right in if you push hard enough. Okay, so the way to disconnect this on the air side, there's a little teeny ball bearing that you got to find on the inside of this coupling. So you got to rotate your coupling until you find that little notch and then you can push it in and pop your air hose out. It's gonna be easier when it's under pressure and there's air that'll help pop it out. So in order to get it in, you can just push it in. In order to disconnect it, you have to find that little notch to push it in. That's kind of a safety feature that allows it to not come undone unless you mean to. So same thing on the tool side, it's on the inside as well. Find that little notch and the little ball bearing and you can unlock your air hoses. So as I said, we have six bags, each bag with 200 feet of hose. Um, the maximum length of hose for this cart, the capacity is uh, 300 feet of hose. 
Um, at this point, we only have bags big enough to fit 200 feet of hose in each bag. So we have six bags of 200 feet each, but in the future, if we can get some reels, we might be able to put 300 feet on a reel um, and make it a little bit more capable. I don't foresee us ever needing 300 feet, but we can add more hose to this to make it 300 feet. So let's go to uh, escape bottles. Um, so here we have an escape bottle. So when you go in, not only do you have the air source from the Saba unit, you also have to have an escape bottle. So I'm going to have my model come over here and model this escape bottle. So the bottle is always going to be on your right side and the strap goes over your left shoulder. And then there's a waist belt that you can buckle around your waist to keep it from flopping around. Okay, so regulator stays nice and safe in there until you're ready to use it. So this escape bottle has, it's a 3000 PSI escape bottle and it's a 10 minute escape bottle. You don't need to turn it on unless your air source from the Saba unit is all of a sudden cut off and you don't feel any air coming in, then you can turn it on and you immediately escape. Um, so we have the, the male end connection for the female end of the hose. To turn on our, our escape bottle is this valve right here up top. We have a gauge and we have a threaded section for filling our bottles. So for us, in order to fill these bottles, we'd have to take one of the quick connect nipples off of one of our 45 minute bottles, put that on there, and then we can fill our bottles up if they're empty. Okay, put that cap back on. So we have our hose line connection, and then we have our second stage regulator that goes into the mask. We can adjust the, the tightness of our waist belt and our shoulder strap. Okay, so then our rescuer would put on his mask. Okay, and then the comms unit is gonna go on his left side over the top of his SCBA mask. So it goes pretty much straight down and then the earpiece goes right over the ear. And then you have a throat mic. You wanna put that close to the Adam's apple. Okay, so that's close to the Adam's apple. And then we can clip that into his clothing and then connect the hose. So one thing that happens sometimes when you're loading the hose and the comms cord into the umbilical, one is a little bit longer than the other. So you can either loop it and then you can attach a prusik to both of these and then clip that into your harness so that if there's a lot of yanking going on, it's not gonna pull your comms or your air hose off your face. So now we can take this and connect it in. So female end of the hose to the male end. Lock it in place, it's good to go, test it. And we can take, and now, so the, the comms connection, you gotta find the two orange dots, line them up, push hard, and twist. And now that's locked into place and it can't pull out. Okay, so then we would take, so that this is nice and, and equalized and it's not gonna be yanking on anything while he's crawling through the, the confined space, we can take a prusik and attach it do a prusik hitch around the, the comms cord and the, the umbilical cord down here and then attach it into his harness so, and then we can tuck this out of the way somewhere so it's not going to be tugging on him, it's just going to be tugging on that prusik hitch. Okay, so now we have everything connected. We have our, our comms, that's going to go through the hose and it's going to hook into our comms box. Um, and in another video, there's a nice demonstration of our con space comms equipment. So because they're both coming out of our umbilical and there's not a whole lot of tail, I would keep your Saba unit and your comms equipment right next to each other. And then the person who's operating the Saba unit can also be monitoring the, um, the comms as well. So we connect 
uh, our hose in. When I put it under pressure, it'll go in a lot easier. And then we can have our comms connected. So now what we can do, we can turn this on and operate it. So we'll turn one of our bottles on. The bell whistles and the whistle whistles when it goes up past a thousand PSI. So you know it's working. So we have common source right now. So we have air going to the tools and we have air going to the personnel. Um, and we have the regulator set for tools. So we could use tools right now if we needed to. Now that we have our hose hooked in for our personnel respirator side, um, we've got our bottle turned on. Um, we're just slightly below 5,000 PSI. We have our air source isolated and our respir uh, the relief valve set for personnel. Um, we can set our regulator to the right PSI for our, our output for our personnel. We can set that to around 80, 90 PSI. Okay, so we have our hose going out and hooked into our escape bottle for our rescuer. And now he can take his regulator, put it in, and he can breathe. So now he's breathing off of the system. Um, the operator here at the salva cart can tell that someone's breathing because they can see the little needle going back and forth as they breathe. Um, so now if somehow the air goes low and someone forgets to replace the bottle immediately, we'll shut this off. So take a bunch of deep breaths. We can see the pressure going down on the input. And once this goes down completely, this pressure will start to drop. Once our pressure goes below 500, we'll hear the whistle blow. About to go off. So now our pressure will drop on the output pressure. That's going to start dropping. And when he starts not feeling the air coming in, he can turn on his escape bottle and he can get out of the confined space as quickly as possible. And while he's doing that, we can be troubleshooting and seeing what the problem is. And obviously, we can. Um, Turn the other bottle on so that's what we'll do right now we'll turn the other bottle on bring the pressure back up to 5,000 psi so this bottle's off we can open up the bleeder valve and then we can take this cylinder out put a fresh cylinder in and then we're ready to go once this cylinder goes down below 500 psi so those are the operations for the Saba cart. Um, we also have a user's manual or an operations guide that will be with each Saba unit. They go over all the things that I've shared so far. They go over all the steps for supplying air, whether it's um, isolated through the uh, trailer or through the bottles. Um, and then also at the very end, we have a layout of how the comms equipment is supposed to be set up for comms. So I would recommend going through this user's manual um, at least once a year and set everything up and become really familiar with this equipment.